Hello and welcome everyone. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where in the world you are. Thank you for joining us today for Powering Health. My name is Tricia Fitzpatrick and I am the marketing manager for Homer Energy by UL. Today we will be presenting the inside story and demo of the free Simple Homer app and website. It's designed to help health clinics in developing countries prepare to meet the increased electrical demands of caring for patients with COVID-19. We're very excited to present today's webinar on Powering Health. It is the free online Homer microgrid modeling tool that we developed in partnership with the World Bank. Its purpose is to help developing countries prepare for the increased electrical demands of the, of the medical equipment that is needed to care for patients with COVID-19. Homer Energy founder and now global microgrid lead at UL, Dr. Peter Lilienthal will give the inside story and a demo of the app. Dr. Lilienthal received a PhD in management science and engineering from Stanford University. He joined the Solar Energy Research Institute in 1990, which became the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, or NREL. He went on to become a senior economist at NREL and created Homer there. A quick housekeeping note before we begin. If you don't have audio, go to the audio tab on the webinar control panel, click on the phone bubble, and click back on the computer bubble. That often cures the audio problem. We have you all muted, so please send in your questions via the chat area of your webinar control panel. You can type them there as you think of them, and we will get to as many questions as possible at the end of the session. This webinar is being recorded, and all registrants will be sent a link to the recording when it's available. Before we begin, I want to talk quickly about Homer, which is the software product that has been key in making the microgrid market possible. The Homer approach includes three different processes nested together. At its core, Homer is a simulation en engine. It simulates the operation of an electric power system for one year, hour by hour, or minute by minute. At each time step, Homer looks for the most cost-effective way to meet the electric load. Simulation tells you how one system operates, and then the optimization step simulates hundreds of different systems to find the least cost solution. Homer also has an option to do sensitivity analyses, which allows you to look at the impact of variables that you can't control and how these affect system design and cost. Examples might be the price of fuel or PV panels. There are three main steps in using Homer to design and optimize your microgrid or distributed hybrid energy system. First, you provide information on the economics like interest rate and your energy demand profiles and location. This determines the renewable resources such as solar radiation and wind speed and system components to consider. Homer then steps through the three nested processes, simulation, optimization, and sensitivity, and then it provides detailed results on the economics of the system and exactly what's going on in every hour or every minute. There are two versions of Homer. Homer Pro is our original flagship product and it has broad applications for microgrids in many markets. And Homer Grid was designed explicitly for behind the meter systems in grid connected markets. In these markets, demand charge reduction, time of use rates, and many other factors or combination of factors matter most. We are still actively developing both of these products as markets and technology grow. For example, to give you a little background on today's demonstration, the Powering Health web app uses our customer application platform, which is built on Homer's SaaS API. 
We are very excited about the possibilities of Homer Cap. It can be used anytime you want to create a simplified interface for, for specific applications as in the Powering Health web app. It can also be integrated into any website to quickly demonstrate the value of a specific solution to customers and to generate sales leads. So now let's get the pre presentation started. I'll turn the mic over to Peter to present Powering Health. Um, well, thank you, Tristan. And thank you all for attending. Uh, as Tristan said, we, we are very excited about this new app um, that we've created with the help of the World Bank. Um, tri uh, thank you. Um, uh, we're showing the URL at the top, poweringhealth.homerenergy.com. Um, and this is actually an update of something we created in back way back in 2007 with funding from USAID as part of their uh, PEPFAR program, the President's Emergency Program for AIDS Relief. So we created that quite a long time ago. Um, and um, surprisingly, even though it, it, we promoted it with the USAID quite actively for a few years, but it, that was a long time ago, and it's still gotten some. It's it's been still been of use, um, but now we've updated it in in many ways, which I'll show in a minute. The goal of this latest update um, was really motivated by our, the concern at the World Bank about responding to the COVID-19 pandemic that. Um, uh, in throughout the developing world, especially in Africa, but not exclusively, um, there's a real problem with insufficient public health infrastructure. There just aren't enough uh, clinics and hospitals, um, particularly in rural areas. Uh, and one of the biggest problems is lack of reliable power for them. And in many places, there is no power at all, or if there is, uh, it, it only runs for a few hours a day. And so we, I love this, the, these uh, pictures, um, um, courtesy of We Care Solar, of people trying to uh, perform healthcare uh, using a cell phone for light because there's, there was no power. So that's the um, that's the motivation behind it. Uh, Trisha, ne next slide, please. Um, before I start, I do want to acknowledge all of the help we've got. Th this project really pulled in a lot of help from a lot of different organizations. Uh, uh, the funding was primarily from the World Bank, and so I thank John Excel for, and Dana Rizinskova for um, making that um, funding available. They, they run the mini grid, pro well, John runs the mini grid program, Dana runs an even larger program that it's part of within the World Bank. The, the main person uh, we interacted with, and, and the real, the real um, um, technical lead on this, was Alan David Lee, and he pulled in Chris Purcell, who's in South Africa and actually is, has built um, several couple hundred health, uh, health power systems for health clinics. So we had some real expertise there. And I'm not going to list all the people here, but 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 I do want to list a couple of people who were particularly helpful, such as them, uh, uh, Chris in particular, but and also Laura Sachel from We Care Solar, because. Uh, we're, I'm not, I'll admit, not a healthcare expert, not a medical person, I'm a power system person. Uh, so having someone like Laura Stachel who knew what co equipment was really common, uh, she and Chris Purcell, uh, that was really helpful. And then USAID was also really involved because um, um, what well, was their app in the, in originally and uh, there's some technical issues that they had to help with as well. Uh, we got some good feedback from Meg and Arnie at Humboldt State University, and you can see the UN Development Program, the World Health Organization, Sustainable Energy for All, UNICEF, Build Health International really helped kick the project off, the Clinton Health Access Initiative. We had uh, a lot of help uh, from a lot of um, organizations, uh, and I just want to make sure that they're all adequately acknowledged because uh, we couldn't have done it without them. Um, so, uh, Trish, if you can hand the, the um, sharing over to me, I will um, share my screen here and um, show you what it looks like. So hopefully you can all see my screen now. Uh, and you can see here's that um, URL I mentioned earlier, 
of how to access it. Uh, and when you do access it, this is what it, you lo it looks like. Um, we have these little arrows so you can expand and collapse things. Uh, so there's a lot more information here. Um, not going to read it all, but just briefly, this is to, the tool is designed to get you an initial design, help you understand what a system co will cost, um, approximately what it'll look like. Uh, this is information that's really helpful when it when you go to actually find someone to help you to actually install the system, a, a solar installer or construction company. Um, it's enormously helpful if you already have some idea of what you want. Uh, and so th this tool is not a final design, but it will get you close and, and uh, that's very, very helpful. Uh, there's a, as I mentioned, there's a lot of information here. So I'll, I'll just expand this briefly to show how to use the tool. I'm, I'm actually going to show you how to use the tool, but, but this is um, uh, um, a way, if you forget what I've heard, I've said, <laughs> You can look it up here. Uh, and again, there's lots it, it, There's lots more info. You can expand uh, this, um, uh, each of the piece. And in particular, I want to point out this guidance node, um, which has an enormous amount of data. And I'm, I'll just show you what it looks like. Um, uh, it, again, it repeats the how to use it. Um, tool and some background about it, some background on general system design considerations um, that goes on and on because uh, there's a lot to this. We've created four tiers uh, all the way from a rural dispensary, which is quite small, up to a district hospital. Uh, I'll show that in a little more detail in a minute. Uh, and those are meant uh, as a way to get, help you get started. Uh, and then a, a list of electrical devices uh, including one specifically for COVID-19, paragraph on energy efficiency, which is really important. Uh, so here's a, a description of these starting points that we've created, these tiers. What, what do we imagine they are? And they go all the way up to a district hospital with 145 beds, a, you know, an obstetric ward, a maternity ward, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to a rural dispensary, which is simply outpatient services. Um, so, And then um, here are the bottom half of this document are our assumptions about what the, each of the appliances in the app are. Um, so th this is, there's a lot here and it's worth going through that on your own. Um, so to jump into it, first thing you have to do is, is um, specify your location. And you can do it by clicking on the map and um, zooming in, et cetera. Uh, or you can just type a location in here. So I'm gonna type Kampala, Uganda. It jumps to that location and it, this is, it will pull in solar radiation data for that location. And you have to say a little bit about some some assumptions about are you grid connected? Uh, if you're not grid connected, if you leave this at zero, it's it's saying you're not grid connected. Um, we're, the kind of grid we're talking about here is a part-time grid um, where it's not. It, it could be 24 hour or it could be just you know six hours in the evening or 12 hours or whatever. You can say when it comes on and for how long it comes on. And it could be 24 hours. Uh, and, you, and you obviously have to specify the price of electricity. Um, the uh, an important issue that it doesn't deal with is oh we, we we're we supposed to have 24 hour power and sort of we do but we have outages all the time. That's a more complicated problem. Our desktop product Homer Pro can handle that. Uh, this app, <coughs> excuse me, this app is not designed for that problem, but it, it will handle the issue of no we we have power that's scheduled to be on for six hours a day or 18 hours a day or whatever. So, or no grid at all. Um, you can specify the fuel, give it a price. The guidance document has some um, references on, on databases for fuel prices in different places. A really important point, I wanna stress this, are the, the costs in, in this section here have to include all of the costs uh, so when the cost of PV here is not just the cost of the panels, it's the panels plus the racking system 
plus shipping and installation or their import tariffs uh to, you know installation labor etc and uh, you have to include all of that it's the total installed cost and as it says here it also includes the maximum powerpoint tracker mppt so you have to think through all of the costs it's not just the panel we have two different kinds of batteries lithium batteries tend to be more expensive but more durable and more powerful so uh, you can compare the two the, the the numbers we're putting in here are just defaults they're not and they've the, the prices for these things vary from place to place quite dramatically especially when you consider shipping and installation costs etc um so um they're we think they're somewhat representative but that don't take our word for it you really do need to uh, consider what these components cost installed in your location and lithium is going to be more expensive than lead typically um the inverter is an important component and and that if you that, that you should include the cost of the monitoring system in that the generator etc um sorry the um interest rate is important because the renewables are high in the upfront cost and low in the operating cost and diesel's the opposite low in the upfront cost but very high in the operating cost so here are those four um tiers that we talked about and they're just meant to be starting points um and and you can see our the, our, the spreadsheet a list of appliances starts with quantities equal to zero so if you so i'm going to click on rural hospital just a place to get started and our sort of default here is that okay they're going to have two va vaccine fridges they're going to have 10 10 lights in the maternity ward and and uh you know i'll, I'll go through this show you how, how extensive this table is in a minute but um but just w to understand how to fill this out you, you put the quantity here the nameplate power is usually listed right on the appliance this is how much power it's using when if, if an example of a refrigerator for example when the compressor is running um and it should be listed right on the appliance typically um but the compressor isn't running all the time so um that's why the average power is listed here and we're assuming a duty cycle of like 50 percent it's, it's on half the time so the so in a typical hour it's only going to use half of its rated power um and then you have to talk about well how many hours is, does it run per day um now a fridge is going to be on all the time so we said yes it's always on we had broke the day into three time periods 7 a.m to 6 p.m that's 11 hours in the daytime in the evening 6 to um, 10 is four hours and then at night 10 to 7 in the morning um, if you change one of these uh, it turns to no uh, but but we do want that to be yes so uh, so likewise for example this exam lights we're assuming that it only runs at night um, um, and so I'm just going to scroll down slowly just so you can see that, that it's a quite an extensive list of appliances and you may not have these in every every location um, and you can just zero it out if, if you don't have them um, we also have um, assuming that staff is is on site and we need to provide power for the doctors and nurses etc uh, and maybe there's a water pump or not but depending on how much water you need you can change any of these numbers here uh, to be more um, to accurate to your location uh, and, and if you have an electric water heater which you probably um, or if you have an LPG you would water heater you wouldn't need this but um or solar water heater but if you have electric water heater that goes here they're there you can see they're very uh use a lot of power um the uh now if you um if we're missing an appliance that's important to you or you don't like our assumption about the duty cycle or something like that you, you can add as many um of your own as you want um my refrigerator put a name on it quantity same thing quantity nameplate power but here you can put your own duty cycle in you, you can put it's um we allow you to to change the average power there so um um i'm going to 
delete those for now. Um, and here's the total kilowatt hours per day based on this assumption. So when you filled it all out of what you think uh, that your uh, uh, facility will need, you hit calculate um, and uh, it'll it'll take 20 seconds or something to run. Uh, and you'll, you'll, then depending on your browser, you may get this screen here and just click view results or you may just jump directly to results different browsers are a little different depending on how they're set up uh, but the, so here's the results that you get um, and it shows four different system types and really we did hundreds of simulations so this is the least cost system that has a genset PV and storage here's the least cost system uh, that's 100% renewable no genset um, here's no PV but with storage and here's you sort of your your base case, if you, if you just tried to run that facility with a diesel, it would use over 10,000 liters of fuel. With our least cost system, we cut that down by 95%. And there's, um, so it's a 16 kilowatts of PV. It's got a, it does have a 12 kilowatt generator. It only runs for 183 hours per year. It has 39 kilowatt hours of batteries. Um, if you get rid of the generator, Obviously, the fuel consumption goes to zero. The cost goes up a fair amount. Um, the capital cost goes up quite a bit because you've more than doubled the size that you would need to, more than double the size of the PV array, have a larger battery bank, larger converter, um, but no hassles with fuel. So it's a trade-off um, and it, you can um, decide whether that trade-off is worth it for you or not. Um, now you can get more details by clicking here. And if you click here, it jumps to our output report. Again, it takes a 20 seconds or so. So I've um, bypassed that by already doing it ahead of time. And here's a more detailed list uh, of outputs. And there's really quite a lot of data, data, detail and data here that I won't go into, but it's, it's the same 16 kilowatts of PV, 12 kilowatt generator, 39 one kilowatt hour batteries. These are just generic batteries. When it comes time to build the system, the company you hire to build it will have their own suppliers that they probably won't be exactly one kilowatt hour. Then they have to set the batteries up and, and, and the PV panels as well in strings. Uh, so it, the system that's gonna get built will be similar to this, close to this, but not probably exactly the same. Um, but here's how it works. Here's the fuel cost, et cetera. Uh, I'm not gonna go through all of this um, stuff here, but um, you can see like the PV output is less during the summer, which is the rainy season. Um, and um, uh, just to give you a sense of, of there's a lot of data here, uh, how, what the carbon emissions is, et cetera. So that's the, um, more detailed results. Uh, to come back here, I just show a couple of other things. One is there's an input report. So if you click here, you end up with this input summary that lists all of the inputs that went into the analysis. So not just the ones that you put in the app, but also the default data that's in Homer that uh, we, you know, we simplified the app so you didn't, you didn't see all the data, but, but here's all the inputs. So again, if, if uh, you wanna know, well, how, did, how did we get that result? Here's the inputs. Um, if you wanna go back and um, um, change some of the inputs that you put in, um, you can do that. So there, there are, the inputs are all still here and you can say, oh no, I really, um, um, want to have four of these uh, and how much difference is that going to make and so so all of your data was, is still there and you, you hit calculate and get a new output report uh, finally what the last thing I'd like to show is that you can actually download the actual Homer file so it, Homer ran on a server in the background uh, but it created a, a real Homer file you can download that um, uh, and open that in Homer proper um, 
which looks like this. Um, and I'm not going to go into this in a lot of detail either. This is really more for the technical folks or the engineers or the, 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 the renewable power folks, uh, not so much for the medical folks, but, um, but the contractor that is going to install the system may want to um, go in here because you can do things like uh, on the PV side, we have a big library of, of PV panels um, that uh, with data about from many manufacturers. Um, and you can uh, change the load profile. Um, so here's the load profile that we used. You, you can um, go into the results. So, so this system compared to the diesel has a three and a half year payback. Uh, um, and here's, the, I'm sorry, I should have pointed out, this should be the same table that you saw in, uh, in the web app. And, and here is most of the same data or a little bit more, but basically the same data that was in the out, uh, detailed report. But you can actually go in and look at how did the system operate hour by hour. Um, uh, so there's the solar output overlaid on the uh, on the uh, load, and when did the generator operate? Um, didn't operate at all during the hour. Um, so and there's just a lot of data here. I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, on it because it's um, it's really for the ac experts and, and what I really want to focus on here today is that we have the simple web app powering health um, uh, that anyone can use uh, and gets you an idea gets you a good idea of what the system will look like um, etc so that's an overview of the of the tool, um, um, and I think I'll pass it back because uh, uh, because we probably have questions. Uh, yes, thank you so much, Peter, for demonstrating how Powering Health works and how simple it is to use. I'm going to take the screen back here and get it. Hopefully you will see my screen momentarily here. Um, <clears throat> so um, before we do go to questions, though, I want to address one thing that often comes up. While no training is required to use Powering Health, because you see how simple it is, when people do want to dive deeper and use Home or Pro, often they want training or support. And we do have a number of training classes that we recently expanded. We also offer premium support and consulting to help get the results you need, or if you prefer, we can do the work for you. You can find out more about our training at gethomertraining.com or contact us through support at homerenergy.com. So with that said, let's go ahead and go to questions. Marilyn Walker, who's the co-founder of Homer Energy, has been collecting questions for us. Marilyn, what do you have? Hi, yeah, we have lots of great questions and um, a lot of technical questions, which I really appreciate about what Homer's doing. And um, I, I actually would like to step back and uh, I, I know this got covered in the intro, but Peter, could you just talk about like hybrids? Like why is Homer hybrid and what's it doing? Because I do see some people who are little confused about thinking that we're designing like a solar system and that upset someone actually because they thought we probably shouldn't be using solar for hospitals for example so can you talk about hybrid systems and you know where did where did homer come from right so um i happen to know the person that asked that question and he he uh sells hydro systems so um <laughs> and and he seems to have left already um yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I've seen some other questions. No, but it's still a good question. Yeah. Um, and, and, and hydro is a great uh, technology if you've got the resource, if, you, if you're near someplace with the adequate head. Uh, and um, there, I, I'm, we, we have nothing against hydro, and Homer Pro can model hydro systems. Uh, but you have, to have, you have to be in the right place, whereas solar works everywhere. Um, 
Uh, so if you have a great hydro resource, it might be a little cheaper, but it's a little more complicated to in, uh, analyze. Solar is simple, I know you can do it anywhere, but but solar doesn't work by alone. Solar by itself isn't gonna work. It needs to be at a minimum combined with a battery. And as uh, the results showed, um, so a lot of times adding a diesel generator, even if you don't use it very much, can make the system more reliable uh, during extended cloudy periods, for example, or especially in this COVID situation where you might have a real surge of load where the you know this this clinic or hospital suddenly finds itself much much busier than usual um so it's electric consumption is going to go up and are you going to design a, a solar system for that peak period and have a lot of un, unused equipment during normal periods or if um uh, so Backup, backup generators give you a lot of flexibility. They, they allow you to manage your batteries better. Um, and, and so it's not always the case that the least cost system is a combination of solar batteries and generators, uh, but it's very, very frequently the case. Uh, we, you know, sometimes wind makes sense too, but, but, but you have to have, the, a, that's only in locations with good wind resources. So it's not, it's not everywhere. So we, we created a simple app that can, be used anywhere, um, and um, we wanted to keep it simple. So and um, yeah, and just to be clear, um, you could always start here so that you got the correct. So so the load, you know, what we call the load builder in a way, like having using this tool as sort of a step one, and then if you wanted to use wind or you know hydro, hydro systems, right. you could pull that into Homer Pro and and have someone do that analysis there, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we, yeah. we have a tool, Homer Pro, that does that, that does it all. It's a lot more complicated. Um, we charge money for it. Um, this is free and simple and can be used anywhere. Right, so, it's a great, so great start. Yep. Yep, and it's a great place to start. You know, Marilyn, there's another question here, and it came up on the previous webinar as well, and I tried to cover this, but it's 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 I've got to reinforce it. When I talked about the cost of the PV system, uh, and I made a big point about it, it has to include the racking, it has to include the maximum PowerPoint tracker, it has to include the shipping and installing, but it doesn't include the batteries. The battery, the cost of the battery goes here. So we call it a PV system, we're in, up here, this input should not include the cost of the batteries. Peter, you're, you're, you're I think you're pointing and people can't see you, but thank you. Oh, that really? I, yes, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, because you don't have the screen, but that's okay. Right. So, yes, yeah. I, okay, so I'll mark that question answered. Um, okay, so... Uh, what, what, was I clear enough? Because I can't reinforce that point enough. I'm, I'm sorry if it's not, it wasn't clear enough when I said it before, because uh, this is the second time that's come up in it when I present this. So I hope that's really clear. The cost of the batteries goes under the batteries. Cost of the PC system does not include the cost of the batteries. Right. So each system component has to be costed out individually. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, here's a great question. Um, do you guys collaborate with any other microgrid analysis companies who manufacture or build similar calculators not limited to the medical field? Uh, well, this isn't this. Web app is limited to the medical field, but our bread and butter business is not at all limited to the medical field. Um, so, um, if you if you're looking for a, a tool to help you design power systems in general, um, Homer Pro is is the is the tool. Um, um, we collaborate with lots of other companies in terms of developers and especially equipment suppliers and development institutions and finance organizations and engineering firms and EPC companies, et cetera. We, we, we have lots of uh, uh, companies that we collaborate with, but in terms of an analytic tool to develop power systems for any application, that's what Homer Pro is designed for. Great. Um, okay, uh, let's see, we did that one. Can you use local, can you change the currency symbol to be local here? In Homer Pro, dollars. you can. In Homer Pro, you can. Here, you can't. Um, um, no, you got to use dollars. Okay. Um, 
And um, where are you getting your prices from? So how are you figuring out like the prices of these things? Uh, we just talked to some people. Uh, we And I, I tried to make this point, but it is really worth stressing that um, we view our role in the world is to provide this methodology, uh, not to be the authoritative source on what do things cost in different places, because that's that's a huge task. It's it's different everywhere, and it and it keeps changing. And we, there's no way we could ever really keep that up to date. So um, don't worry about our prices too much. They're just supposed to be kind of close, um, but we're not vouching that these are the right prices. Certainly not in whatever location you're in. Um, so um, if, if you if you want accurate prices, you have to go get them yourselves because there is just no way to keep up an accurate database of what different things cost in different places. Okay, is this uh, for AC mini grids only? You know, that's a good question. Um, n no, not necessarily. Well, it depends. There's two different things that question could mean. There's there's two different ways to design a power uh, a hybrid power system, often called AC coupling or DC coupling, um, and um, it it doesn't matter for for this um, tool. Um, it that that gets sort of technical about sort of where the inverter is and et cetera. Um, and um, so I'm not sure if that was the question or if the question was about well, what if I don't want AC at all? What if I want just want it, the whole thing to be DC? Which uh, a lot of people are interested in that, um, uh, especially for the smaller clinics. There's there's a, there's a lot of interest in DC distribution these days, it's still kind of a new idea. Um, and you can do that, you just zero out the price of the inverter, um, make sure all of your appliances are DC appliances with the appropriate um, power consumption for the, DC, for the DC appliance. And this will model, a, you know, um, and you'll get a, a result appropriate for a DC uh, mini grid um, where, where, where DC is the distribution um, um, power, um, how, the, how the distribution system is laid out. Um, actually, that reminds me of, of one thing when I get back to costs. Sorry, I meant to mention this earlier. The one cost that's not included in the inputs here is the cost of the wires inside the facility and of the breaker box, for example. So we have some default data for that as a function of the size of the system. So you have to allocate all of the costs sort of up to the breaker box. Um, but everything within the facility, we have some default data that um, you can see in the input report or you can see when you pull it up, pull up the Homer file in Homer Pro. Um, but we, um, we, we're not asking you for the cost of the inter wiring internal to the facility, which right. would be really different for a DC, DC distribution system than for an AC distribution system. Okay. Um, okay, I can answer this question. Am I permitted to uh, repeat this training for young system designers? Absolutely. This is a free, this is free. It's out there. You can, you know, train people here. This, um, this webinar is being recorded if that's helpful and uh, it will be shared and it will be publicly available. So, um, you know, absolutely the goal of the World Bank and of USAID that originally um, funded Powering Health was to make this technology available at no cost um, to help people with these systems. So, so please go ahead and get it out there. Um, okay, uh, moving down. To what degree do you integrate control equipment in your modeling? Talk about control equipment and maybe algorithms. Yeah. Uh, well, boy, there's a big question, um, big topic rather. Um, so we assume there is some kind of controller there that prevents the batteries from being overcharged or over discharged that turns on the generator when needed although that could be manual but that's really shouldn't be manual um, um on, in smaller systems that is often handled within the inverter uh um if um if for larger systems you might have a separate control device um, but I would put the cost of that in the inverter um, 
we have two control strategies that we try when we try both of them and it really has to do with how you use how or whether you use the generator to charge the battery so um the bio, I'm, i could go off for quite a long time on this topic but but um we try both of those disc control strategies whether or not you 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 want to allow the system the generator to charge the batteries so there's pros and cons to that um if it keeps the batteries better charged if you let the generator charge the battery but then it also doesn't uh, uh always leave enough room for the solar power to charge the batteries um so um we try both uh, in the background when homer's running it's trying both control strategies and picking which one's best um uh, there's a million control strategies you could do. We actually, in Homer Pro, have a, an API that lets you create your own control strategies, either in C++ or MATLAB. That's a whole big, complicated topic. Uh, but um, but but you can, you can, in Homer Pro, create your own control strategies as well. Great. Uh, okay, I can, here's one I can answer. Will the PDF manual for the entire tool be available for download and where? So I'm actually not sure if you mean the Powering Health tool or the Homer Pro manual, but um, the Homer Pro manual is available online, so you could turn that into a PDF. There is no PDF for it. It's like 400 pages long, I think, at this point. Um, um, but the the PDF that I showed, the guidance document, yeah. is that it, is that that can be yes, downloaded. absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know what I didn't show, but I it's it, 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 you click on the link, the PDF shows up in your browser. If you hit print, you can. Pr I don't know why it's not save as a PDF, but the, this is the Windows browser does this. It, it you, but you can print to a PDF which is really a file you save to your computer. So you can save that as a PDF for odd reasons. It's under print rather than save, but um, that's Windows. Um, but y yes, you, you could, that's right there. Go to, our, go to the powerhunghealth.homerenergy.com website and click on the guidance document. You've got the PDF. Great. Uh, okay, I think this question you can generalize a little bit. It says, do you think India needs this app? And maybe you could just talk about the relevance of the app to, it's not just relevant to Africa, right? No, it's it's not. Uh, in fact, I, and it's, it's it can be used anywhere um, where you're trying to figure out what kind of um, power system is most appropriate for a health facility. Uh, so, I imagine in, there will be lots of applications for it in India and parts of Southeast Asia, um, and actually anywhere where power is a, is a, is a problem for, for right. health facilities. Okay. Um, okay, this one is tricky, but I'm going to put it to you anyway. <laughs> Why would we look at systems with a high capital cost when these might be short-term needs? Uh, well, that, that's um, no, that's actually a really good question. Yeah. Um, so, but you're going to build a facility, so the facility is going to stick around for a while. It's not going. I mean, if you're just if you're just thinking of a tent, I suppose that's and then you take it down when the pandemic is over, whenever that is. Um, that's that's one thing. But in most of the developing world, there's a lack of healthcare facilities in general. So. Um, um, we're under the assumption, we're, or the hope, uh, the goal is that we, this, these won't be completely temporary facilities. On the other hand, the load might be much greater during the pandemic than it would be later. Uh, we, and so uh, that's why I mentioned this, and I, I think it's a, a, an important point that. Um, that's why a backup generator, so the alternative to a renewable system is a generator. Um, but a hybrid system is sort of the best of both worlds. So with, with the generator, you can handle the surge, the temporary surge, hopefully temporary. Um, and, but then, and then you still have a, a facility with power that for, for, for later. Um, so that's the beauty of a, um, of a hybrid system is that it's you're not overbuilding it just because you have the short-term need you, you you build the solar portion 
that's appropriate for the long-term need, but you have a backup generator for the surge, if you will. Um, also, we, we, you know, there are a lot of back um, health facilities in developing countries with diesel generators. And the word I get from the field is that's a huge problem, that, the, that p keeping those things fueled and maintained um, just doesn't happen. Uh, so um, theoretically, a short um, a backup generator is the right um, a diesel generator is the right uh, tool for a short term need. Um, but healthcare is not a, there. There will be long term health need, healthcare needs one and two. The uh, experience in the field is, is just really problematic. Keeping those diesel generators running if you're using them 24 seven, they just um, it's just problematic. So, so the hybrid is the best of both worlds. Great. Um, okay, so this one, I can just speak to this a little bit. It says this is very applicable in the Philippines where they're, um, so this relates back to the question about India. Someone says, I hope you can partner with our government. I mean, I will say we, we so this was developed by originally by USAID we we did the technical work on it we you know we support Homer um, and World Bank came in and did this um, and then it's really up to the individuals in these countries to um, to maybe reach out to those organizations about what might be done in terms of um, aid and assistance there um, okay Let, I, I, yeah, want to, I, I want to reinforce that. We would love to yeah. work with the Philippine government or any other government. Um, I, I have um, only sort of indirect uh, contact with the Philippine government. I have a, some not very tight connection to them. Um, but if you're in the Philippines and you have connections to the government, introduce us. We would love to work with the Philippine government, the Indian government, the Ugandan right. government. Um, uh, but we're a small company, and and uh, we'd love to, um, just yeah. help, us, help us out. And I mean, and and this is this is not limited. This was developed, so it can it should be able to be used anywhere. Anywhere, yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Let's see. Um, what Type. I'm not sure I understand this question, but what type of diesel genset did you use? What and or was it? You know, how how do you deal with the diesel genset type? Is it in size? Well, so it, it's true. There are diesel gensets that are designed just for uh, standby use that aren't that really aren't appropriate for 24/7 use, and there are more expensive ones, prime they call them prime power or whatever, that are really designed for 24/7 use. Um, it really is a function of cost. So and um, and so, so this is just a as I've said many times a starting point. So it's assuming for, the, for the, our default cost is three hundred seventy eight dollars a kilowatt. So that would not be a prime power. Uh, but as you can see, the results say well we really should only run for a couple hundred hours a year total. So that's a that's not a prime power application. Um, if you want to get into that level of detail, you really should be in the desktop app Homer, uh, Homer Pro. Uh, in terms of sizing, what we just set, took the what what, uh, what what looks like the peak load based upon the loads that you put in, some random randomization that we we, we added to it. So because um, every day is not the same, came up with an estimate of the peak load size the generator to be a little bit larger than the peak load that, and that's what we think is generally a good idea that the if you're putting in a generator it should be just a little bit larger than your peak load and so that's how we size it uh, um, but all of the components not just the generator but also the pv panel and the battery for this in the web app are just generic they're not meant to be specific models you can do that in Homer Pro. Okay, so we're, we're running out of time, and so I'm going to combine a couple questions here. I'm going to start to kind of pull some of them together. So, seeing a lot of questions about like what types of renewable energy resources, you know, and sources can be modeled here about small wind, and so maybe you could talk about that both in Powering Health and then in Homer Pro. So, what does Homer Pro do, and what does Powering Health do? So, um, 
Well, as I said earlier, um, we want something that's simple, easy to use, and can be used anywhere. So, so and so this web app, Powering Health web app, only looks at solar batteries and generators and the grid if it's available, right? Because uh, that's the most common actually, but uh, but also the, the most ubiquitous. It's the simplest and, and can be done anywhere. Homer Pro, on the other hand, it was originally designed where wind was the most important technology 20 years ago, um, or 25, whatever, years ago. Um, and, but it also does hydro. It also does biomass. It can do hydrogen. It can do you know, like fuel cells. It can do um, um, or any kind of fuel fuel fire generator. Uh, uh, it does hydrokinetic. You know those are uh, run of the river you, you, um, turbines, um, current or tidal powers. It 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 um, it's a real Swiss Army knife. It can do a lot of different things. That but I'm talking about Homer Pro. But that, if we tried to do that in the web app, we'd no longer have a simple app. It would right. Be and, yeah, which I think, I mean, there's a question here about, um, you know, how are health workers and administrators using the app? And, and you know, how, how would, I mean, who do you see as the audience for this app, Peter? Maybe that's a, a great way to ask that question. Well, um, most healthcare workers are pretty busy, I imagine. Right. Um, so um, we'd love it if they used it, but that but we're sort of expecting they're busy with what they're doing. We we hopefully have kept it simple enough that that they could if they wanted to. More likely though, we we see um, someone in the health ministry that's like thinking, oh, I need I need to get another hundred clinics built. Um, how am I going to do that? What do they look like? How much is this going to cost? And within that health ministry. Maybe it's the energy ministry, maybe it's the finance ministry, you know, whatever. There should be someone who has the time and technical ability to go find out what things cost and 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 come up with a list of apply working working with um, healthcare providers. What if you're going to build a health clinic? You got to figure out what what needs what equipment what healthcare equipment needs to go in there. So it's the person designing those things i mean you're designing if you're des either designing or owning a facility like that you've got a, there's a, a power system is just one of the things you need to, de to design so who's ever doing that design uh, for the facility as a whole power systems one of the things that they need to worry about so that's the main uh audience i think uh but then they're going to hire someone to actually do the installation so they that would they, be useful for them as well um uh, so there's all these development organizations, um, government ministries, planning, plan, the planning organizations, the facilities themselves. If if they've got someone uh, with the time and and focus to do that, as uh, as opposed to just caring for patients. Um, so that's the audience. It's it's, right. it's a pretty you. broad audience. Yeah. So one last question. It's kind. Of, this is, I'm going to get a little technical here, and then we can wrap it up. Um, but it's a great question, I think. What demand factor is used for the electrical load? Is there a worst case, best case scenario where all equipment is on at the same time, et cetera? Can you talk about that? Um, so demand factor, there's load factor is one of the outputs that you'll see, which is the average power divided by the peak power. Um, we do not assume that everything is on at the same time. Um, we do have this average power. Uh, we're, the modeling for this is done in one hour time steps. So um, we do average things across the hour. Um, uh, we do assume this randomization, which is a default that you, you um, uh, be, so that that really changes that really moves stuff around in terms of when it when it uh, runs. Um, so um, if you want to get that technical, if you're worried about those kind of issues, that's why we let you download the Homer file because uh, that's that's uh, something that you can play with in in Homer Pro. Um, it's related to it. I'm not sure this is the question, but it's worth raising this issue, which is. 
because we're doing one hour time steps, we're not modeling down, and, and the desktop can go down to one minute, um, takes longer to run, but it doesn't go shorter than one minute. We don't go down to one second. Uh, so one of the things that we're not modeling are the surge currents. When a, when a motor first turns on or a compressor first turns on uh, for a second, or maybe two, maybe a half a second, whatever, for a very short period of time, there's a real spike in power consumption. It's, um, uh, it's called an inrush current. And um, you have to make sure your inverter can handle that. And they can, ha they can handle, though they'll have, here's what we can, here's the power it can provide over 30 minutes continuously. And here's what it can do for one or two seconds in a short period of time. It can handle a certain amount of surge capacity. But if you have a big motor, um, same thing with diesel generators. That's the, the, if they, when the motor turns on, you can often hear the diesel sort of slow down, lug a little bit. Um, if you have big motors, like big water pumps or something, uh, you do, that's a, that's a design issue Homer doesn't look at and you do want to consider, uh, and it's very, but it's very technical, very specific problem. Okay. All right, Tricia, you want to wrap it up? Yes, thanks so much, Marilyn and Peter, and also to the audience for such wonderful questions. Um, before we go, we just want to let you know about some upcoming events. Um, July 23rd from 9 to 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Um, both Marilyn and Peter will give you a tour of Homer Pro. So if you're interested in learning more about that and all the new features that have been added since its introduction in 2014, we hope that you'll come and learn about that and the power behind Homer Pro. And then in August, we will present a webinar focused on Africa with two of our UL colleagues who are specialists in solar and energy storage. We'll explore some of the challenges with creating and supporting sustainable remote mini grids. We will also discuss best practices, um, design choices, cost-effective operation, maintenance, and managing remote access issues. And you can watch for a link for both of those in our follow-up emails. And then we're really excited that the 8th Annual Homer International Microgrid Conference is coming October 12th through 16th. It will be 100% virtual, and we have received numerous excellent submissions from professionals around the world talking about the exciting microgrid work that they are doing. These are being reviewed now, and details will be posted on the conference website as they become available. Initial speakers are already posted to give you an idea of the impressive lineup. We do have opportunities for sponsors as well, so please contact us for more information about how you can get involved in the rapidly evolving world of microgrids, you can visit the conference website at microgridconference.com. And that's it. Thank you again for attending today's webinar. If you did not get your question answered, please send it in through your sales rep or our support desk, and we will respond and watch for an 